reporting to you from sunny South Florida, where the temperature is 86 degrees. There are coconuts hanging outside, there are pineapple in the backyard, and uh, <laughs> that's all true, by the way. Um, paradise isn't as nice. Paradise always has a downside. Actually, one of the reasons why I don't live here anymore is that it pisses on your head basically five months out of the year and uh, rain to me is very depressing around about uh, end of May it just rains non-stop until October pretty much every day it's depressing but rain that makes things grow yeah it's also depressing um, anyway I've uh, heard this come up a lot and there is now sufficient evidence to make a question to you and uh, listen I know there are a lot of Sony and Nikon and uh, Canon fans out there I mean I'm a hardcore Nikon fan I've called Nikon out on a lot of stupid stuff that they've done um, but I love Nikon right now I'm shooting on my Nikon D500 with the 17 to 55 shooting my fat ugly face right now instead of my usual camera you'll you'll probably wonder why it's like geez he's even more ugly than normal it's yeah i'm shooting in better definition on the nikon at d500 that's the reason for that um sufficient information um there have been some xt2 reviews come out and i counted oh yes i counted and uh you know i'm really good with juggling information the dude that has over 200 hard drives and oh yes i do have over 200 I'm really good at checking information and uh, seeing the broad picture. Some people can't see the forest for the trees. Some interesting reviews lately. Very, I, they almost border on unprofessional, lackluster, um, insufficient. Now, I don't give a damn. If someone makes a video review on the X-T2, even if someone comes like, this camera sucks, you know, I absolutely hate it, I hate Fuji, you know, I think you should buy a can. You know, that's obviously extremely subjective, and that's a valid review. So there's nothing wrong with even a review like that. I, for one, am, for valid objective reasons, not a fan of Sony. I spent many years fixing cameras. You know, uh, what you don't see in the camera is the ecosystem, this customer support, who repairs it, you know, how does the company approach, you know, how it deals with its customers, its ecosystem, its support, its firmware. So I have valid reasons for that. Am I a bit too slanted against Sony? I actually think that someone that believes that is pretty much in the right. And while I do have objective reasons for that, they are right. Getting back to Fuji, however, I found sufficient evidence, and it is sufficient. I've seen people asking this question. Many different Fuji boards um, wondering if uh, certain entities are uh, uh, very uh, subliminally, um, let's just put it frankly, poo-pooing on Fuji. And um, I actually think that there's substantial evidence for that. Is it many parties? No. The history was some, the answer is yes. I mean, there is. There's no perfect camera, okay? We all know that. Well, I know that extremely well. You know, the D500 has its issues. The Fuji X-T2 has its issues. By issues, I mean very minor. There's no perfect camera. The Nikon D810 is far superior a choice for portraiture and landscape than the D500 is. The D500, with its incredible buffer, is, uh, is basically uh, a huge eyed owl for seeing in the middle of the night. The high ISO performance is incredible compared to the X-T2. The X-T2 is an incredibly well-made camera. Um, the buffer, the frame rate, the autofocus tracking, absolutely incredible. Love it to death. High ISO performance, it doesn't even come close to touching the D500, which is recording me right now. Same thing with the uh, the XQD uh, card buffer. You know, the buffer depth is nowhere near the D500 on the X-T2. No perfect camera. You know, if there was a perfect camera, then I'd only have like one or two cameras. Two. Be the same camera twice. And I've got 15 different cameras. I was shooting out later today with the Fuji X100T. It's got a leaf shutter on it. Love that damn camera. Love it. Even posted some pictures. Not very interesting pictures, but I was just out roaming about. Um, I think that there actually is, getting back to the main point, sufficient information that I've heard from a lot of people that are asking the question. It's like, 
Is there a... Uh, no, it's not a conspiracy, for God's sakes, no. Is there a... Is there a... Uh, it's kind of see this in Hollywood. There's, uh, I won't name the Hollywood star, but she's incredibly gorgeous. But uh, kind of everybody has it against her. And uh, is there any reason for that? Is this person, you know, uh, you know, a jerk? And there's no indication of that either. It's kind of like Fuji is this famous actress that uh, has an awesome personality. So, I mean, it's not like people hate her because she's very beautiful, but, you know, like uh, the B word. <laughs> There's this invalid um, undercut of Fuji, and I do see it, and uh, I've seen sufficient uh, empirical uh, evidence for that. Is it massive? No. Is it a conspiracy? No. Um, it doesn't bother me one bit. The only thing that that influences are weak minds that don't know much about cameras. It's like, well, so-and-so is a really famous YouTube photography channel, you know. This person or that person or those folks must be right. You know, they, they kind of just do a really haphazard drive-by, you know, drive-by. It's like, there's the X-T2, boom, onto the next camera. You know, a very, very haphazard drive-by review of the X-T2. And uh, I've seen that. And uh, so I'm with you. And I've seen that on every Fuji board and some other photography boards. And I think that that is valid. Now, people that have a brain and people that, uh, you know, have experience with mini cameras, they're like, you know, they know better. You know, they own it, and, uh, you know, obviously some people seek validation for their purchase. I mean, we all know that. It's like, you know, it's like someone talking bad about our child. It's like, you know, you got an ugly child there. It's like, well, you can't, even if it is an ugly child, no one wants to hear bad crap said about their camera. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... People that are, uh, you know, disobjectified from their camera, you know, it, they bought it, but I mean, if it has issues, it has issues, or if it has shortcomings, that's fine. But I've seen sufficient evidence for uh, a little bit too much negative slant against Fuji. And uh, as someone that's owned more cameras than God, and yeah, I know that's hyperbole, but you get my point for God's sakes. Someone has owned more cameras than God and, you know, fixed them and torn bunches of them apart. And I made a lot of videos tearing cameras apart. The X-T2 is unmatched. I mean, it is. There's nothing to bitch about it. Everything has its little shortcomings. I mean, there's no perfect camera. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's completely, you know, there's always something wanting in any camera. Whoever the hell makes it or how expensive it is or cheap it is, there's always something wanting. It's like, why didn't it have this? Why didn't it have that? I'm not talking about that. I mean, in and of what it is, it's, it's you know, it deserves uh, a lot better rating than it's getting from some of these uh, cockroach uh, photo forums and uh, from some online uh, YouTube uh, camera reviewers. It deserves better. And, uh, you know, I don't pitch it for Sony or Nikon, or obviously not Sony, Nikon or Fuji. And... Uh, I think some of the uh, concerns, and it's not really a concern, some of the, you know, some of the uh, ill will against uh, too much, it's not hatred, not Fuji hatred, but a little bit too much Fuji film dismissal is valid. And, uh, you know, I hear you and uh, I think you're correct. I've seen sufficient evidence for it. So, thanks for watching. I'm going to go uh, edit some photos.